seemed to but, dominate. But we just we just took over, took over, and been doing that for, for for eight years now. We've been into that circuit now for eight years, and they're still doing it. Oh, going great, going great. In other words, they just eat you up. You know, you just people just running and hollering. But the thing of it is, what I'm trying to, to get to the root of it here, yes, they're excited. They scream and holler. They, the kids holler over, over Michael Jackson. But the, what I'm trying to find out is, do you yourself, as James Davis, founder of the Dixie Hummingbirds, feel as though when you're in this environment, spiritually, are these people being reached or are they just caught up into the emotion of the music? Well, that's pretty hard to say, but... but when the, when the people out there hollering and running and, and, and making as much noise as you're making, you you got to feel like they're into something. Mm -hmm. And they don't you don't keep going back to those places now, unless unless the people are crazy about what you're putting down. Oh yeah, they they, uh, they, 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 they may be looking for but, yeah, but looking to it as entertainment. Yeah, yeah but, but but they know we we up there talking about Jesus. Right. We up there. We're not up there singing singing a lot of junk now. We up right. there singing about Jesus. I mean, sure enough, and they'd be just shouting and running and hollering and carrying on. The 60s came along, you did the nightclubs, and, and you also had the big break with Paul Simon. You got a Grammy. You went back and recorded that song over yourself, the Dixie Hummingbirds, Love Me Like a Rock. You did your well, own That's where we got the Grammy. You got the Grammy award. We a got nomination a Grammy from our. Okay, we did got, you get an award or a nomination? We got, the, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got the real McCoy. Wait a minute. That's the Grammy. That's the Grammy. I'm going to hold that in my hands. That's, I can say I finally had my hands on a Grammy. Each one, of us, each one of us has one. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Each one. Now, we got the gold record from Paul Simon. Right. That one came from ours. And you have your own gold record here on Peacock. Oh, yeah. yeah. Christian Automobile, I bet. I bet that's what it is. I can't even see it from here, but I bet that's the Christian Automobile album. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, actually, if, if you know, if we if we had gotten uh, gold record for the numbers that sold, we'd have a whole lot of them. Gospel records don't sell as quickly as the rock and roll records. They sell over the years. Today, people are still going to be buying Peacock records on the Dixie Hummingbirds so if they can find any around. They're well, slow sellers, but they keep going over the years. Right now, I bet you somebody would try to be finding the Bells of Joy talk about Jesus. I imagine so. If they could find out they'd buy it. But, uh, all right, uh, let's, 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 you, you were wondering whether the people were really enjoying it or not. Now, we were down in Georgia somewhere, stopped by, by maybe a policeman or, or whoever. But the first thing they would want to know, uh, if we tell them, we would tell them that we were singers, mm -hmm. or know we were, well, we were the bells of joy. <laughs> Start talking about, talk about Jesus, you know. Isn't that so incredible? That one people, song. People all over the country go wild over something. Just you know, yeah. If it's if it's if it's a hit, it's a hit. But that's again, we're talking about a record versus an appearance, an in-person performance by an artist. The bells of joy. As you said, when they got here to Philadelphia, they sang that. They only sang that one song. Talk about Jesus. Uh, I don't think they made it. They had to have another side they to the made, record. They made other songs, but uh, that was that was but, the song. But we knew when we first heard them sing that they were not singers. They were uh, a bunch of guys that were lucky enough to hit something that people like, and it sold. Well, yeah, you know people in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Some people say, "Hey." Go ahead and sing that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, made the boys feel a little bad, you know. They they wanted to, to get away from that, you know, and try to sing something else. But they couldn't sing nothing else. Who were some of the... And actually, the guy that led that song didn't belong in that little outfit anyway. <laughs> I'm serious. That sounds like something that goes that, on that, today. That, that, that's what happened. They that's borrowed what, somebody else's singer. They borrowed a lead singer from and another got a hit record. And made a hit record out of it, and they were never able to make another one. Who were some of the great female singers that you came along, some well, of your favorites? Uh, well, let me tell you something. Baby Sis and the Davis Sisters 
Uh, well, let's put it this way. You had two different entities. Davis says, and, 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 and the Davis says, Claire Ward and the Ward singers. Now, if, you, if you're going to let them sing, say, 15 minutes, the Ward singers wouldn't let them to first base no night. <laughs> <laughs> the Wards were going yeah, first? Yeah, listen, I'm giving it to you. No, no night. Just don't let them sing for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Ward singers, Ward singers will sweep that house in 15 minutes, any night. But now, they, they, that was the kind of singer they were. Now you give baby sister, give that sister 45 minutes, an uh, hour, and she'll run, run over you. <laughs> <laughs> that girl was too much. Man. Yes, she was. Yes, yeah, she was too much. She was one of the greatest. She one was. of the greatest. Mm -hmm. Flat-footed. Now you can take that to the bank. Flat-footed. Yeah. Then you have. We sat up and watched those folks 29 programs in a row. Where? At the Apollo Theater. Really? Yeah. Who was on the program? Us. Let me see, who else was on there? I believe, I believe, uh, but the main ones who were on that program were us, the Davis sisters, and the War Singers. We, we were you the, mean to tell me that three we of you all on the same program at the same time? You think that's something? You think that's something? The the first year we we won a uh, the the uh, group of the year award, we won it for the men. The war singers won it for the women. Now where was this at? Where was this at? Up in New York. Oh, this this was this was Golden Gate Auditorium. This, no, Johnny Myers. No, no, no. This this was this was what you call. In other words, this this was the. Statistics. They oh, had co the cover your poll. Yeah. The cover your poll. Yeah, the poll. The poll. Yeah, the poll. Gave it. We we had it for the males. The war singers had it for the women. Mm -hmm. For the, for the ladies. That was nineteen. I think it was nineteen fifty five. I believe. Right. Because Walker was with us. Mm -hmm. But you were all at the Apollo Theater. So that means what was it? Four shows a day. Yeah. Seven days a week. And this. Hearing the same songs almost. Yes, the Davis sisters, the, the, the war singers, the young Davis sisters that week. Really? Oh, are you kidding? I mean, the war singers. But he only had 20 minutes. That's I said, uh, which, which, which one did I say? I, I meant to say that the war singers did a job on Davis sisters. Mm -hmm. is, that, that, is that what I said? Yeah. Oh, that was, that's, right, that's right. <laughs> you, you, but now you that turn that. Mar you turn, and Kitty? you turn that thing around. Yeah, you turn that thing around now and, and let them have forty-five minutes apiece. And boy, listen, I don't know nobody would do too much with the Davis sisters. They were rough boys. It took took uh, Davis sisters about, I guess, about uh, forty minutes to really get hot. Mm -hmm. And wasn't no hole in that sister then. Oh though. Lord. What about the Angelics? Well, the Angelics was, was uh, they had one of the biggest sellers that's ever been made. Touch me, Touch Lord, me Jesus. Lord Jesus. They did a few things with you. Now, with they the birds. made a whole lot of bread with that one. Uh, they were on Gotham label then. Just, just one cent. Now, you know that thing had to sell. Yes, they, they can't nobody tell me that record didn't sell. <laughs> that record sold. Did you ever tour together? Because you made an album together. Yep. Yeah, we toured together. And people ate them up. Crazy about it. They're still going strong. Sister Rosetta thought the same way. Yeah, Rosetta thought. Yeah. What happens to singers when they were very popular during the 50s, the 40s, Rosetta, then she comes into the 60s and t to die the way she did, almost with no money, no recognition for a person well, who had been around the world? Well, there was a little more to it, to it than that. Uh, she uh, actually, um, well, I don't think I, I don't think I need to get into this. Uh, she straddled she had, the fence. She, well, no, she had a little bad luck. Mm -hmm. This woman, she that, lost a leg. This woman that was singing with no, this woman that was singing with her, cut. You know, you know, she she sang with Nellie uh, Marie Knight, uh, 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 Lutcher. Uh, Nellie, Fletch Nellie Fletcher. Nellie uh, Fletcher. What's it? What's that? Nellie Lecture. Nellie Lecture. Nellie Lecture. Yeah. For a while. But Nellie wasn't and, a gospel and singer. And became, uh, yeah, became, bec that's what really popularized her in the first place. 
when she left there and went to, went back to God. Mm-hmm. People ate her up all over. But she had a woman with uh, that helped her called Marie Knight. Now Marie Knight, while uh, before she got with Sister Thought, made uh, some well I don't know what you call it, blues or whatever kind. Yeah. Of, but but you know, secular, secular, music. secular music. Secular music. So uh, after they were out there a while, then for some reason they turned this one loose. This 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 number on Marie mm-hmm. loose, and that's what hurt her. You know, just like uh, this thing that uh, the uh, these what these guys name uh, staple singers made about respect yourself. Right now, this this respect yourself was a great number. Yeah, but the people took it the wrong way. They 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 thought they were trying to go rock. Well, now wait a minute. The staple singers "Respect Yourself" came out during the '60s. If you would listen to the words of that, it was such that was during the black movement in this country, and that is such a powerful message. I know, I know what you're saying, but we, we got we got a lot of folks that look at. Well, maybe the discharges weren't the guy who was playing it. Well, I don't know, but we but, were playing it. You know, their stronghold was the South. To the Staples? Oh, yeah, people crazy about the Well, Staples. Philadelphia loved them, too, uh, yeah, now. But, yeah, but I, I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about down in, in the South, where the people worshipped them. Right. They kind of turned thumbs down on them for no reason. But well, now, wait a minute. There was a reason now, Mr. Not, Davis. They, there they, was a reason. They, they, they Those people were pushed to, to uh, pushed over in, in, in the uh, rock field. Who pushed them? Because they made this thing respect yourself and something else similar to that. No, I, it, started, people, it started people, before then, Mr. Yeah, Davis. The, I know the history well, of them well, staples. I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this: down, down in that neck of the woods, we were down in there too. You know, from mm-hmm. time to time, with right. them, and, and 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 down there, you know, behind them, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That was that's what they said. They said that they were trying to go the other way, and Staple Staple told me that he didn't want to sing rock. He told me he didn't want to go, but he was saying for a living. That's what he said. It looked like he was going to have to go. Yes, he said it south. My children have to eat. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but he only went because the people stopped, stopped following him. You know. But you know why they stopped following him. The church people stopped following him. But you know why they stopped following him. Not really. I can tell you why they stopped following him. What I heard, in other words, what I heard, what I heard them doing, respect yourself in another song similar to that. There was nothing wrong with the song, not the one I'm talking about. No, but see, it started, if you if you remember, you might have been here in Philly during that time, it started with Hammer and Nails, the album on Riverside. That's what started it. Then the next album, This Land, which was all folk songs, Blowing in the Wind, This Land is Your Land, which mm-hmm. were nice songs. Mm-hmm. They weren't gospel. Mm-hmm. They were folk songs. Mm-hmm. Then it was respected. Then, of course, it was the, the Freedom Song, Marching Down Freedom Highway. Uh, they came to the Uptown Theater with The Temptations and Gladys Knight. They used to open up the show. They turned it out so bad, all the artists said, put them at the end. Mm-hmm. They were a hit. It was then, I think, they got a taste of the money. And I think that's when they decided. Then they came back here to the Met. I'll never forget it. Mavis had recorded A House Is Not A Home. It was a number one record across the country. They came back to the Met. They were introduced. They came out on the stage. They got a polite applause. They sang their same old stuff, Help Me Jesus. Mavis went down the aisle. She screamed. She squalled. And they sat. And finally, Pop said, come on in. That was it. That was the last time they came here singing gospel. The people, yeah, and I you still, know yourself, Mr. I Davis, still, I, I, people I, I, are unforgiving. You still don't see what I'm talking about. Now, all right. We were in Oakland, California with one of the big, one of the big uh, white groups. Uh, I think, was it, was it the, the Oak, River, o- Oak, Ridge o- o- Boy. Oak Ridge Boys? The Oak Ridge Boys got up there and they sang half of that program, rock, right. 
And half gospel. Yeah. And the people went crazy. You know why? Yeah. Because they are country and western singers. Yeah, yeah. And country western singers, Mr. Davis, always include no, gospel in a repertoire. No, no. The, 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 the yeah, Oak Ridge Boys are not rock and roll singers. The Oak Ridge Boys were first gospel singers. Yes. Yeah, man, we have traveled with them. We right. Were they were gospel, time. but still wait, country. Wait, wait, wait. What I'm saying is they accepted that from them. Because well, they the white. people are a little broad, more broad-minded than we are. You're right. That was it. Well, that's what I'm saying. They gave those fellows. I was looking for for the, some of the people to uh, get get salty, and they gave them a standing ovation. Sure. The In only... fact, look, do you know we have been with those guys several times, uh, the Oak Ridge Boys and two, three of the other uh, other groups, and that was the only time I'd ever seen them do that. That was the only time I've ever seen get, get a standing ovation. Because those people are more broad-minded. But I tell you what, I bet the the, the white church uh, assemblies of God don't smile upon them anymore. But let, let, let me tell you one. Let me tell you one more thing. This this is interesting. Now on the programs, most of those programs we we made appearances with those fellas. We just took the show going going away. Took the show going away. And uh, when we would come up to the places, they had a couple, some of them had a couple of buses. Mm -hmm. They had a, had a bunch of chauffeurs That's and had right. people carrying the bags mm -hmm. and everything. Here we are <laughs> carrying our own bags and everything. Boy, it, it was kind of fearful in a way. But we would take the show all right. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they were the ones who were a whole lot more prosperous. Because... The white Christians take care of their white artists. Something like that. Those Christian artists, they take care of them. Something we like don't. That. Something like that. Now, by rights, mm -hmm. the Dixie Hummingbirds, because you've lived such a clean life, should be taken care of and revered as much as they are. But we are, as a group of people, I hate to say it, we're stingy sometimes. We don't think you should have anything. That you're singing for the Lord. You shouldn't charge these prices. You shouldn't go in a nightclub. You shouldn't sing on those other things. You should only be singing in church because some people have not broadened their scope. Let me tell you one more thing you, you won't understand. We are made, we, uh, in, in most of, of, uh, uh, on most of these dates, the, our usual crowds that we had, we would have about maybe uh, a fourth, a fourth of the people that we would have done ourselves. Our people wouldn't come. Just a handful of our people would come to each each program. So that's one of the reasons why we got out of it, because we felt like you know the people our people were not coming, and uh, it just didn't look right the way it was done. What well, did your people know you were going to be on yeah. the program? Yeah, yeah, they knew it. Are you kidding? Yeah, they knew it. What do you think of gospel today? What I think of gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, when you start out, you had four people in the quartet. Now yeah, you got eight people. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think about gospel. I don't feel about gospel like the Addie person does. The Addie person is... Have you ever listened to the station, Brother Addison? Yes. Live album. That one was pretty nice. In fact, I think that's the best live one we've ever made. But I want you to hear this thing that they made uh, up here uh, at this festival. I want you to hear the birds tune up when they're in good voice. They have been here. What do you mean when they're in they good have voice? been here several times when they were not in good voice. Every night's there not your lot, night. Do you know that? I don't care who you are. There, there are a lot of people in this town who have never really heard the birds. They think they have. You know, the birds couldn't be out here all these years if, if they didn't sing any better than they have done some some of the times we have been here. What do you say to younger quartets around here who say, "Huh, oh, the birds have had their day." They don't have it anymore. Well, they don't know the boy. But listen, the, the expense is a whole lot more out there now than it was when I was out there. And they're still making it. You know, you know, you well, know. I out, had one tell you me. You can't make it out on the road now unless you're doing something. You, I had one you tell me. On uh, one that. group who had been around for quite a while said, "Yeah, we took the house from the birds last night." I said, "Yeah, but one thing about it, you got to punch a time clock tomorrow, and they don't." Well. That that's somebody that don't, that that really doesn't know what's what's happening. Instead, instead of them giving us credit for holding things together, that's right, and getting them situated into it. How many years for the birds now? 
This is 1991. How many going years? Going on 63 years. My God. Going on 63. How long do you think they'll go on? Well, they're thinking of talking about going 53, 53, 53 more years. I think that's the last thing I heard touch me. <laughs> but what are they going to do? Get some young... Well, wait a minute. The sons of the birds. Whatever happened to them? They lasted for a couple of years. Well, Good my, my son's in Florida. Mm -hmm. James Jr. But they they had a they had a thing going pretty good. Very thing. good, yeah. Nice, nice uh have a nice album with them. Well, anyway. I don't know. Are you going fishing? I, I, have you been fishing lately? I have I have I haven't been fishing lately. Mm -hmm. I I've been to the hospital. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but boy they they they, you talk about giving, give, they'll give you some tests in that hospital. You can't even remember, much less <laughs> figure that you, you, I, you know what I told those people? I said, you only give me enough x-ray to give me something I wasn't looking for. That's right. They'll, they'll create something if, they, if they don't that's, stop. That's what I told them. When I, you, I had them die laughing. One time they were trying to give me some kind of spinal. I said, hold it, hold it. Boy, I had them guys in stitches. So after, after they got me up there in the bed, one of the guys came up there and said, I was glad you uh, straightened those guys out. I said, hey, who gave me the spinal before? He told me, I said, well, forget the spinal. Go to another alternative. Anything. Don't mess with my back. This is my back you're messing with. Boy, I really saying that thing. Are you a, uh, now affiliated with any church around here? Not directly, no. Mm -hmm. My wife. My wife is a staunch member. Well, actually, at the same church I was, I was in when the, I was down church south. She's still in there. Mm. My Lord. Hmm. Yeah. I go there with her. her it was a while, but I don't consider myself a staunch member. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, get tired again. Mm -hmm. How do you want but this traveling kind of? Yeah. Took me away from things. Took me out of it. Mm -hmm. How do you want to be remembered? When they write the history and book the of guy, the Dixie Hummingbirds. The guy who kept it together, well, that, that sums it up about as well as anything else. What kind of advice do you have for, for people now? For singers? For singers. For young singers? Mm -hmm. That depends on what they want. What they want. Quartet singers. I mean, if they, no, I mean, if they want to make a living, I, I, I'll do them like, like the white man did us that time. He said, fellas, you all are A number one with me, but I'm going to give you some some good news and some bad news. They, I, I like you all. You sing very nicely. You've got great voices. But if you really want to make a good living, go on up there and join Bill Kenny in New York. The ink spot. The so ink you, spot? So you can do it. So you can do the same thing he's doing and, and do it to death so you can do it. But the gospel... So the people around here want you to do that for nothing. I had my mind made up. That's the only reason we stayed in it. And had I had I Do you have any regrets? Oh no. No. No regrets. Everything turned out great. Great. I don't know. I guess it could have been better. I, the only thing that bugged me like like I said, when I was when we were traveling around with those guys, they couldn't hold the life up for us to sing by, and you're still the one had all uh, had all the help, you know. <laughs> and that was that was kind of funny in a way, and in a way it was. And then too, what really did it by us going to places where we packed out the place by ourselves and went with the group, and a handful of our people would come out, you know. That's that's strange, isn't it? But that's the way it was. And, and look, they tried that in Philly. They tried that several times here. That has never worked. And why is By doing what? Hmm? They tried what? Put, put, a, put a white group on the program like no, no. in town. It won't work. No. Now, Unfortunately. if you go down there and sing, sing for, for the white folks, they'll come. Yeah. In fact, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of ways, they'll do a whole lot better than the black will. We went to... Uh, on the other side of Chicago, out there in uh, mm, Iowa, 
-hmm. We were out in an hour over a week, every night at eight o'clock, rain, shine or whatever. The place was packed in jam. Every place we sang in. And the people didn't know us from Adam's house cat. They came because the lady in New York said, don't miss them. Wait a minute. Not not with us. Man, listen, you can you, you can sing your hips off, boy. And and we want you to you, sweat. You, we you, want you to And they will tell you that. I want you to work for my money. Yeah. I want to see you sweat. Yeah. One guy walked up to me and told me, he said, why don't y'all give up and let somebody else have it a while? Y'all been had it too, too long now. I said, I don't believe you. Someone actually yeah, came up to you me, in a church yeah, and told you. Told, told me that. Yeah. We sang on the guy's anniversary in, in uh, I don't know, if, I doubt if you've ever heard of Bob Swenson. 19 years in a row, we made appearances in um uh, in his little hometown. Can't call it that now. Anyway, we uh for nineteen years in a row he put us on the tail end of his program. And it was an it, it was it was real hot, July. Hot. And uh we we thought we thought he just didn't know any better. We didn't say anything to him about it, but about, you know, keeping us we were the first group ready and he holds us back all this time. So we made an appearance up in up in Virginia, and someone got him to be the master of ceremony. And that guy got up on that program and said, well, I think we should give the birds a break and let them have a good place on the program. I, I almost fell out with the guy. He actually said that? I almost fell I out. I thought he would tell me he was holding you to the last because you were like the, you know, the special guest, yeah, keeping but, you at yeah, the end. Yeah, but there, there, there's only one thing wrong with that. If... It's a real hot day, and you have a lot of people on. It's all right if you just have two groups oh, on the road. Okay. But if you home. got you you got you you got five or six programs, uh, five or six groups on the program, and everybody's saying everything they know. Everybody's is tired, hungry, or sick before you get up there. Why don't they get some kind of system going with the quartets? Well, somehow sing two songs. Man, you know, God, God give it. God give you. Uh, Five six hundred dollars, he figured he owned you anyway, you know. <laughs> God, does, he may not know doodle about what he's doing, but listen, you work with me today, and he'll tell you, look, you, little next guy, have you come to him? Now, this, 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 will, this will get you. Have you come to him? You go down, you get there, and you look around, you can't find no placards, don't hear nothing about it on the air, nowhere, and you Go to him and say, hey, man, what's happening with the placards? What's happening with the program? Why, why we can't hear it on the radio? He said, like, uh, <clears throat> I work for mine. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he, he'll put that on you then. Like, I work for mine. I'm doing your thing. I told the guy one day, I said, you mean to tell me you're crazy enough to think you're doing me a favor, getting me away from home, thinking you're doing something that you're not doing? I said, I don't believe you. I said, listen, if we ask, if you ask, uh, you ask us to come to you. Don't, don't, don't get us if you don't think you can do nothing with it. Don't do that. Do you miss? Because when you there? get me away from home, boy, and everything is high. <laughs> oh yes, I miss it. I, I dream about the fellows eh, almost every night. I bet you I've had at least a thousand dreams. At least a thousand dreams. Do they about stay the in boys. touch with you? And, and this, this will get you. Would you believe I haven't done one number on a program with them in a dream? No kind of way. You know what I'm, what I'm doing? Right. Trying to get the money. Somebody give me a, give me a run around like like a dude we was we were singing for in North Carolina. Uh, we had a good time in the program. Oh, we had a glorious time. And one of the ladies told me, "Say, hey, your sponsor just just went out the side door. You you better watch it. You know we had to run that joke down to get out of the bridge." Boy, let me tell you, you, you name it, we have, we have seen it, we have been in it, we have been under it. 
You've got a lot of, you have a lot of memories. Oh, man. Lots of memories. You talk about memories. Well, it's been a real joy being with you today. Yeah, well, um, I've enjoyed you it. You brought back a lot of fond memories, I, and we've learned a lot from I you. I had to get wound up. But, uh, <laughs> we've learned, learned, learned a lot from you. Yeah. And uh, we certainly wish that you have many more years, that you'll be around when the birds celebrate. What is it now? You just did the 50th anniversary? Well, they'll just uh, celebrate the 63. 63rd anniversary coming up. Okay, 63rd anniversary, and may you see many more. And um, again, thank you for sharing some of your memories with us. Well, everything, everything's look, everything's looking good right now. I've been through.